ang third topic DOH natin. about the DOH COVID-19 vaccine rollout plan for PLHIV. How will PHIV receive their COVID-19 vaccine? Okay. So, this will be presented to us by no less than uh, Dr. Noralyn Evangelista. She is from the Department of Health. She is a graduate of the Doctor of Medicine and with Master's Degree in Public Management. At the same time, she specializes in community medicine and communicable diseases. So let us all welcome Dr. Noralyn Evangelista. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting to you the Philippine National Vaccination and Deployment Plan for COVID-19 and the Government Plan for Filipino PLHIV. With the highly anticipated COVID-19 vaccine deployment and vaccination, there exists a great demand for relevant and timely information on the government's efforts to ensure that a significant number of Filipinos will be vaccinated by 2021. Our vision is to provide safe, equitable, and cost-effective immunization for all Filipinos by 2023. To achieve this, it is our mission to establish end-to-end -end immunization program against COVID-19 to protect the public and reduce morbidity and mortality rates due to COVID-19. The DOH objectives for COVID-19 vaccination are as follows. First is to provide equitable access to COVID-19 immunization services priority groups or at most 50 to 70 million Filipinos if with enough global supply by 2021. Due to the novelty of the COVID-19 vaccine, hesitancy for the vaccination is unavoidable. So we need to increase the demand for vaccination services through capacity and confidence building measures. And also, we would like to ensure safety in the immunization program and provide support to patients with adverse reactions and institute governance, regulatory, financing, and performance accountability measures for COVID-19 vaccine immunization. As shown in your screen, this is the organizational structure of the vaccine cluster. Using the guidance provided by the World Health Organization's VRAT, or the Vaccine Introduction Readiness Assessment Tool, a multi-sectoral national organizational structure for COVID-19 vaccine is established, institutionalized, and integrated with existing organizational structures and coordination mechanisms for COVID-19 response. So ito pong COVID-19 cluster natin, shall serve as a unified command and control, coordination, communication, cooperation mechanism to ensure the procurement, deployment of COVID-19 vaccine and vaccination of identified eligible population. So on top po, as we can see, we have the interagency task force on the emerging infectious diseases. So this is a task force po created through the executive order number 168 years of 2014. Susunod po doon is yung ating national task force against COVID-19. So this was established to ensure and to oversee the operations of the national response. So makikita po natin um, from the national task force against COVID-19, we have the response cluster on the left. And then sa right side po, we have the recovery cluster. And sa middle, the COVID-19 vaccine cluster. So ito pong COVID-19 vaccine cluster natin, of course, was chaired by Secretary Carlito Galvez. And it is further subdivided po into different task groups. So meron po tayong task group on the vaccine evaluation and selection. Ang lead po nito is yung DOST, followed by the task group on the diplomatic engagement and negotiation. DFA naman po is our lead. And then the DOF naman leads the task group on procurement and finance. 
Si DOH po, siya yung nag-lead sa dalawang task groups. Yung task group on vaccine cold chain and logistics management and the task group on COVID-19 immunization program. Lastly, task group on demand generation and communications po is headed by PCOO. So yung itong ating task group on COVID-19 immunization program, pinati pa po natin siya sa sub-task groups naman po. So we have for the planning, policy and technical support, sub-task group on program implementation, data registry, data management, monitoring and evaluation, and lastly, STG on the safety surveillance and response. As we can see po on our screens, we have the independent expert bodies. So meron po tayong um, vaccine expert panel, we have the NITAG, the HTAC, and the NIFIC. So yung um, vaccine expert panel po natin, they guide us for the research and um, development sa mga vaccines. Yung ating INITAG or Interim um, National Immunization Technical Advisory Group naman, they give us recommendations on the improvement in the health service delivery. Ang ating HTAC, yung Health Technology Assessment Committee naman po, they help us decide um, on what vaccines to choose based on the efficacy and cost effectiveness. And lastly po, we have the NAFIC to help us monitor yung mga causality of adverse events following immunization. So as you can see, uh, this ensures us that all our decisions are driven by data and based po on scientific evidence. Okay, let me uh, walk you through the activities and preparations for vaccination. Yung atin pong vaccination program, uh, we follow the phase approach. So first is the pre-implementation and then the implementation phase. Please take note that all of the activities during the um, pre-implementation phase were, were already conducted because we are um, nearing the implementation of our vaccination once we receive po, or dumating na yung ating mga vaccines. First po, for the pre-implementation phase, yung ating identification ng vaccine and eligible population. As mentioned earlier, kanina po na-discuss then ni Dr. Maris and si Dr. Um, Zabat yung mga pinagdadaanan na proseso on the evaluation and selection of vaccine and I've mentioned about the vaccine expert panel and the health technology assessment and also the NITAG. Later po I will show you yung tungkol doon sa ating FDA approval yung ating emergency use authorization. And then the next step is the identification of simulation areas. We already did the code or the coordinated um, response to uh, defeat epidemic. So we visited different LGUs and we conducted simulation exercises. So what we did po, we evaluate the micro plans of each LGU and we have um, scripted scenarios and injects to challenge yung mga micro plans na meron yung mga LGUs para makita po natin yung kahandaan nila in terms of cold chain. Tapos meron po ba silang mga contingency plans pag nagkaroon ng mga problema pagdating po ng mga vaccines natin. And then followed by yung ating master listing, screening, and registration. So very important yung three M's natin, master listing. So dito pumapasok, we check for the innovations of the LGUs like the use of the QR code for the registration. So um, they will lead the master listing of the uh, population and then micro planning na mention ko po kanina sa simulation exercise natin, we try to challenge yung mga micro plans nila. Kasi minsan, the micro plans are available, pero kapag merong mga scenarios, like sa mga cold chain, yung sa refrigerator, na wala ng kuryente, ano po yung mga contingency plans ng mga LGUs natin? And lastly, yung uh, mapping of our adverse event um, or AEFI 
COVID referral hospitals. So, dapat po for every LGU, meron silang nakamap out na sa mga catchment areas nila within the vicinity ng mga hospitals na pwede nilang pag-referan in case of adverse event following immunization. And then, vaccine allocation and distribution. Like what I've mentioned, um, malapit na po tayo towards the implementation and the vaccine administration. And lastly, pagkatapos po ng ating vaccine administration, syempre, we are going to have the AEFI monitoring and response. In my following slides, I will be uh, showing the process or yung cycle natin for the AEFI monitoring and response. So uh, earlier po, it was mentioned din ng ating mga um, previous speakers po, si Dr. Nepomuceno and Dr. Zabat, about the emergency use authorization. So the World Health Organization highlighted uh, the need to have um, expedited risk-based regulatory approval pathway po for the COVID-19 vaccines. So in accordance to, to, to that, um, we have the passage of Executive Order Number 121 authorizing the FDA to issue this emergency use authorization for COVID-19 vaccines. And correspondingly, the FDA nag issue rin siya ng FDA Circular Number 2020-036 or the interim guidelines for the issuance of PUA. So, just to reiterate po, na mentioned po kanina, we still make sure that uh, the vaccines are of quality, safe, and efficacious. So uh, the benefits should still outweigh the risks. I've mentioned about the HTAC or the Health Technology Assessment Committee. So as shown in your screen, this is the decision um, making matrix for the HTA. So we need to check if Number one, yung responsiveness to magnitude and severity, safety and efficacy, responsiveness to equity, social impact, affordability and viability, and household financial impact. So lahat po ito, once na-covered lahat, the HDA will provide recommendation to the Secretary of Health for the vaccine. So this is the summary of the status of vaccine evaluation and selection. So hindi lang po natin to na update right now. We have the emergency use authorization for Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and just this week po yung ating Sinovac. So where are we right now? This is just the summary of the preparations that we've been doing. Like what I've mentioned, we already um, conducted LGU visits. So sa, sa Pasig, Valenzuela, Mandaluyong, Navotas, at um, iba pa pong LGUs na para makita po natin yung readiness ng mga LGU pagdating ng vaccines and with their um, readiness assessment tool, their micro plans, and katulad na mention ko, we conducted simulation exercises to challenge and check yung mga microplans nila and the contingency plans that they have. And also, we know that for each vaccine, meron siyang mga optimal temperature for the cold chain. So we already checked din yung ating mga cold storage facilities. So this is the summary of the uh, FISMID recommendations po for PLHIV. It was already mentioned po kanina ni Dr. Sabat. Um, reiterate ko na lang po some of the points. So it was uh, based on the evidence, PLHIV are at increased risk for severe COVID-19, but generally they may use vaccines that do not contain infectious or live viruses. So for the recommendations, only absolute contraindications to vaccines is severe allergic reaction. So I mentioned din po ito kanina. And the PLHIV po is a part of the priority populations that may be vaccinated. I've mentioned about the independent expert bodies po, our interim NITAG, uh, DOH TAG, Technical Advisory Group, and yung NAFIC po. Um, yung ating eligible uh, population for the priority population for vaccination, syempre po it was developed and guided by the WHO SAGE or Strategic Advisory Group of Experts and also recommendations po ng mga ating expert bodies. And 
of course, ang mga priority population natin, frontline healthcare workers, yung mga at increased risk po, yung ating mga senior citizens and with comorbidities. So you are part po of our priority population that that may be vaccinated. Okay, I've mentioned about the AEFI monitoring and surveillance. Siyempre, pagkatapos po tayong mabakunahan, um, dun sa ating mga vaccination sites, kailangan uh, hindi pa rin natin pa uuwiin, pero i-observe pa rin po natin yung mga nabakunahan. And after na umuwi sa kanilang mga bahay, of course, we will monitor for the adverse event following immunization. So this is the cycle of our AEFI surveillance and yung mga provisions of um, reporting ng ating mga adverse events are outlined in AO 2016-0006. I mentioned po, um, one of our expert bodies, yung NAFIC, is ang role is to establish nila yung causality ng mga adverse events following immunization. So these are the preparations of the AEFI surveillance. We already started um, cascading yung mga training modules natin on the AEFI and the training on the VG flow. So ito po, right now, syempre madaming mga innovations tayo. We are using the digital uh, platform. So yung VG flow natin is a digi digital platform for uh, AEFI monitoring. And um, we have ensured the functionality of regional AEFI committees and regional AEFI response capacity. Right now, we are on the finalization of our AEFI referral pathways in the regions. As I mentioned earlier, um, during the um, LGU visits, we also check for, for their readiness and yung map out nila dun sa area nila sa LGU kung anong mga AEFI COVID referral hospitals ang pagdadalhan po after vaccination once magkaroon po ng adverse events. So ngayon, ano yung magiging role natin, each individual, dito sa ating uh, rollout ng COVID-19 vaccination? We can be the champions of vaccination. Let us be the agents of tamang information. So we share accurate information. We take active steps to be informed. We organize sessions or fora to engage others constructively, katulad po nito. We join uh, DOH organized or DOH partner sponsored webinars and trainings. And we participate in feedback forums. So you have the power to change other people's opinions and you are the country's champions. Let 2021 be the, be the best year. So yung BIDA natin stands for bawal ang walang mask at face shield, isanitize ang kamay, at iwasan ang makulog na lugar, dumistansya ng isang metro, at limitahan ang uh, physical na interaction sa iba, and alamin po natin ang tamang impormasyon. So reiterate ko rin po yung mga sinabi kanina ng mga previous um, speakers po natin. Uh, Nireiterate po nila Doc Sabat then yung sa ating minimum public health standards. So ito po yung ating BIDA solution sa COVID-19. Okay, this ends my presentation. Again, uh, maraming salamat po for inviting me and stay safe po.